Hey, 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 it's your boy Speed here, back with another video, and today we're going to be following a 3k, well, actually, I don't even know the MMR, what is this, Archon? Archon 2, we're going to be following an Archon 2 Beastmaster, and we're going to be talking about the mistakes he makes. I've done a video for this series, I believe, on the mid lane, safe lane, and position 4, so after this, there will be a position 5 video, so if you're excited for this video, the position 3 Beastmaster version, like the video, and also if you're excited for the future, position 5 video where I talk about average 3k mistakes that obviously apply to multiple brackets, guys. 3k mistakes also apply to 4k games, 5k games, 2k games, 1k games, even 7k games. I give you the information that I think is correct. It doesn't apply to a single bracket, it applies in general. But yeah, if you're excited for these videos, like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, check out the Game Leap website. You want to know why you should? Because I love Beastmaster, specifically Beastmaster Jungle. And you guys might have heard that I did a Beastmaster VOD analysis. But what you don't know is that that is the greatest video of all time. It really, really is. It doesn't get better than that. And yeah, for $6 a month, for your first month, if you sign up, it's $6. Like, $6. All you have to not do is buy one like, medium pizza from Domino's, just hold off for one day, and you can get a Game Leap sub, all right? Not only am I making you lose weight, I'm also getting you a Game Leap sub, which is increasing your knowledge, which is some top tier stuff right there. So I recommend you sign up right now in the, in the description down below, and uh, I'll see you there, guys, because otherwise, I hate you. All right, let's get into the game. So we're gonna be following, as I said, a Beastmaster offlane, Archon 2 player, and he's leaning with a Silencer against the PL. Now, right off the bat, because guys, when you're looking at a laning stage, you wanna be thinking about like, hey, what's gonna happen in this game? What should I be thinking about? What's my game plan? So I'm looking at this game, we see a PL, Zeus, a Night Stalker, Magnus, Venge. So one thing I'm thinking about is maybe I'll go mech build this game. Like I would consider going the mech pipe Beastmaster or the Vlads, right? You do have two other carries and even a Silencer position four. So you have plenty of heroes that are going to deal damage, maybe you can frontline. Looks like you're not doing that based on the Necro 3 item build, but we'll see what you do nonetheless. Most importantly, I'm going to be interested in seeing your laning stage, how do you snowball the game. The PL Beastmaster matchup is, I wouldn't say it's too favored in either direction, I would say Beastmaster wins by a little bit, only because he has, you know, units and PL doesn't. Uh, but yeah, let's just see what you do. So right off the bat, great last hitting on the first wave. All you got to do now is deny this range creep. Eh, that's close, maybe that's not deniable. But most importantly, you want to be using your Hawk off cooldown, and I, I've already watched this game full through, so I remember a lot of the things that happens, and this is a main one that, guys, you have to fix. If you are an offlane player, and you have a spell that needs to be summoned off cooldown, it doesn't really matter what the spell is. If you have a spell that should be being spammed in the landing stage, you have to spam it. So Call of the Wild has to be used off cooldown. It's a 42 second cooldown, boars last 60 seconds, meaning you can have two boars going at a time for 18 seconds. And this is very important because this is the duration where you're actually the strongest. But because you never summon boars off cooldown, you never have this advantage. You simply lose the advantage because you don't click boars off cooldown. And that's actually going to be a major mistake of this player. And I see that within a lot of 3 the players. Not only is he just letting his boar die for absolutely no reason because of bad micro, he also doesn't summon them off cooldown, which essentially means he doesn't really have have boars that often. What you want to do with the boar is not only harass the enemy, but use it to deny and see yes. Moving on into the laning stage, you're actually doing a fantastic job last hitting 17 and 5 at the 3 minute mark compared to the 13 and 1 in PL is great. You're number one on the leaderboard, which is awesome. Beastmaster is a great last hitter, so respect for that. The only thing, once again, that I'm going to say in a minute here is the lack of boar spam. And the reason why I have to stress this is, guys, like, very often people will get confused on why they can't win their games, why they're not getting MMR, and it can really be something like this is such a big deal. Like, you can't make this mistake and expect to go up, in my opinion, because this is, in my opinion, is such a big mistake. You're constantly letting your boar go into kill range, which is going to give uh, the PL XP if he decides to kill it, and you simply just don't spawn your boar. I, I can't stress this enough. Also, this is an SEA Asia game, and I bet you this Beastmaster, when he lives, he's like... I can't play because my server is so bad. Like, it's not your server, guys. All right, your server might be trash. I've never played in SC Asia. I, I, now I can hear all the comments already. Spain, you haven't played there. You don't know how bad it is. Uh, my grandpa grew up in the SEA server, and he just barely made it out. Like, uh, man, I, I know it might be hard, but there's no way you could tell me it's that bad if you don't even s summon Call the Wild Boar off cooldown. Like, this is the main advantage of Beastmaster in the landing stage, and you're just not doing it, so... Just hurts me to see it. It really just, I don't know, it just hurts me. Moving on, this trade is a bit too aggressive. You get caught up in a wave a little bit. Not the end of the world. Overall, I actually like the overall item build you went. I like the ranger protection. I like the salve. I like the branches. So I'm actually a huge fan of the skill build and item build. I think everything is going well there. Your last thing is pretty good. I do believe that this chase onto the bench was, eh, it's okay because she was pulling. So overall, good awareness in the laning stage. Like, I'm not going to lie. Other than this major boar issue, which 
I just wish didn't happen because otherwise I think your gameplay is close to very good besides a slight lacking of priority on denies, which frankly I've, I've never seen a 3k, 4k player deny enough. Like every single time I watch them, they just miss denies or just don't go for denies. And it, it really does confuse me. So just keep that in mind, guys. Ask yourself if you deny enough creeps. Uh, it really can change the laning stage. XP matters. It's the most important thing in the lane. But yeah, let's move on. So in this upcoming fight, I actually really like your target priority. You're going onto the Venge here, which is the number one target. After you finish off the Venge kill, you very quickly switch onto the Zeus and not going on a PO, which is a good decision in my opinion. The PO wouldn't really die to you. He can doppel off your slows and you do a good job securing the kill on to the Zeus. On top of that, then you finish off the kill onto the PO and already six minutes in, you get a triple kill, which is putting you at the top net worth. And we're even going to see some really good kiting with the boar here. Almost kill yourself by walking into the camp. This time you, funny enough, did summon boar off cooldown, which is great because it's secured a kill. Overall, fantastically played fight there. And, you know, I'm just impressed by this player's overall laning stage. I don't believe it's a smurf. I did some deep diving. Don't believe it's a smurf. But this CS for this current timer, being 3-0 with a good skill build and generally good spell casting, is very impressive in my opinion. And it doesn't end there. The, the, the Magnus comes in. Once again, a pretty good job with your Boris. I wish you switched him onto him a little bit earlier, but you do a really good job of, of hitting him, right? You hit him when he's stunned and then back off when he's not waiting for the RP. As simple as that might sound, I, I think that's something that a lot of players just don't do. And then once again, a great board usage. Like, uh, I'm honestly impressed. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Like, sometimes I am shocked that like players of this caliber don't get mad at me, okay? I'm just giving my observation. But players at this MMR do really make good plays, like high MMR plays. It's just a lot of small things that add up that they don't realize and they probably don't see that is likely holding them back, such as this boar problem. I mean, look at this fight breaking now. There's a fight going on right now and he doesn't have a boar out. Imagine if he has two boars. He doubles his overall damage in terms of obviously boar damage output, which is a ton. It's such a big deal. And once again, you're not terrible at it. It just always could be a little bit better. Um, and that's what I improve on. Even here, you should have shifted your boar over to take the fight. I don't really know why you would split push this early into the game with the boar. So a bit of a mistake. Like at this point in the game, you're not worried about towers. You're mostly worried about fighting and amplifying your farm and then towers afterwards. On top of that, you go for this kind of meh item build in my opinion. Like this item build can be okay on PL, but you don't buy boots for the majority of this game, which is just bizarre to me. Here, you probably should have committed the roar a lot earlier. This was like, this is so bad. I'm not going to lie. This is just ugh, ugh. So once again, a little bit of a boar issue. Not as bad this time. Pretty good. But like, this just has to be a roar. I don't know why you would wait. Uh, his doppel, you know, realistically, he could have doppel juked it at any time if he sees the animation. But you, you just got to go for the roar. You know this is the real one. There's legitimately no illusions anywhere. So you know this is real. Just commit the roar, right? Like, there's no reason to hold your spell there. Um, and then you blow it on this Venge, which is... She was dead anyway. Like, there's a 0% chance she lives. So, a uh, pretty big mistake there. Only because, you know, who is the win condition of the enemy team? It's the PL. Absolutely, it's the PL, right? It's 100% PL. And therefore, like, it, it, my main goal is to Beastmaster this game, if I have a good start, is to continue to shut down the PL, right? Like, I would love to see you just send your units at this guy and even dive him a little bit. You could force rotations, spawn your second boar, and keep going at him. Like, there's no reason to back off here. I'm not saying push the tower. I, I wouldn't want to see you just push the tower blindly. Like, I love the fact that you're actually killing these camps in between. But now you could go back, right? You see the Magnus mid, you see a dive going on mid. Go run at this guy. Don't let him farm this wave. Don't let him farm it. He's having a bad game, right? He's not doing terrible. Not terrible, but he's not here. 1500 gold higher than him. Run at this guy. Don't give him space. Force rotations, bring people to you. I want to ask you guys a question. If the Vendor to Zeus ganks the Beastmaster right now, what do you think happens? The Beastmaster will kill them, 100%. The PL cannot do enough damage with the follow-up of the Venge or the Zeus, and the Beastmaster will easily kill either of the supports if they come. In fact, he could kill both of them. And instead, we're going to see this very passive playstyle where you sort of just jungle for a bit instead of pressuring a PL. Now all of a sudden, PL is getting free farm, even though he's like, it's it's disgusting, terrible skill build, but once again, not summoning boars, and like pushing him in tower here is okay, but I have a couple of issues with this mid tower push. Okay, I want to ask you a question, guys. Look at this right now. Look at this right now and tell me why should he, in my opinion, focus on staying top, amping his farm and shutting down the PL right now instead of pushing the mid tower? Why? Why would I say that? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, it's Night Stalker ulti for a little bit, so that could be a bit dangerous. He is dead. That's not the main one though. Most importantly, your Roar is on cooldown. Your Necro is on cooldown. Well, it's about to be, right? It's about to run out. And therefore, I just don't think it's a good fight. I would wait for my, my Roar and Necro to be up, and then I would look for the mid tower because then I can take it very quickly, right? 
without any contestment. I love the fact they are looking to rotate to mid. However, what I would do that would make this 10 times better, at least in my opinion, is I would send a hawk to this area, right? I would send a hawk into the enemy jungle right here, and I would push in a top lane, kill the camp, kill the camp, take all the PL's farm, kick PL out of lane, camp, camp, into the tower when my necro comes up. You guys see what I'm saying? You see why that would be much more efficient and become a much better timing, right? He would have all the spells, it wouldn't be nighttime, and he would take away farm from the PL as well as continuing to snowball himself. On top of that, if he has a hawk in the area, it's a free kill onto the Venge. Easily. Like, all you need is two hawks, and the Venge is basically dead. It's it's very hard for her to live. Instead, you end up going bottom here. Like, now you're just farming bottom side jungle, uh, which in my opinion is quite a bit of a waste. Like, you see how the Ursa should TP top here, right? Ursa should probably go top here, right? But he doesn't. And guys, this is what I'm saying about these low MMR games. I don't mind the fact that the Beastmaster might try to shift bottom or mid to open up the map for the Ursa, or even consider playing the game with the Ursa, right? Or creating space with him. But no one takes the open farm. No one takes the safe farm, which is top right now, right? Because there's wards. So take it yourself. Snowball. Just get to an early level 10. Just destroy this game with network. You're already ahead. Beastmaster is one of the fastest farmers in the game, right? When he has a good game, of course. Uh, he just can snowball out of control. Instead, you kind of just run around. You, you start taking jungle camps. This doesn't pressure anyone. It doesn't amp your farm that hard. This bottom tower is basically useless. It doesn't give you Roche control, which is important this game. Taking this bottom tower does not let the Ursa Roche. It does not let you Roche. It really doesn't shut down the map. It doesn't shut down the enemy team's farm because the PL would prefer to farm top anyway. PL is free farming top, right? All that time, you're killing this bottom through one tower that, in my opinion, does very, very little, right? And you continue to shove this lane. Who are you pressuring here? With this great start that you have, you are putting no pressure on basically any heroes. The only thing you are doing is shoving a lane into Zeus Venge which frankly just gives them a little bit of farm. Uh, so overall, I just think this last sequence was absolutely abysmal. And this is where a player like this Beastmaster gets held back, in my opinion. He had the opportunity to snowball this game by sort of just staticking his lane, continuing to run over the game with a good Hawk placement, and, and you know, just the vision game that you get from Beastmaster, from the Hawks, and solo carry. But instead, he goes these really greedy items, which you can rush Necro, but you need boots. Like, you still want boots, so you can run around. You're also going to take the damage talent later on, so you definitely want boots. And yeah, you just kind of run your face into a tower, which can be okay. But whenever you're pushing a mid-tier 1 tower, you don't really want the push to start like this. You don't want it to be some starting from here up to here. You usually want it to be like a, a collapse, right? That's how you should generally push mid-tier 1 tower. Otherwise, it's just a bad fight. I can't stress that enough, really. I, I, I might even just make an entire video on why you need to be careful about the mid-tier 1 tower and like my thoughts on it. But yeah, nonetheless, you took a snowballed lead and did basically nothing, and now you're pinging out this Night Stalker as if killing him really matters. You're just not playing any useful part of the map. The top side is being left completely open, there's complete vision, like, man, top side is heaven for me right now. And realistically, I could, I would argue there's a chance if I was playing and I was in your position, I could be level 12 right now. On top of that, you're getting gone on here. Spawn your stuff, dude. Use your spells. Like, I don't, I actually don't remember what happens in this fight, guys. But do you see why it's very important that you ca he casts all his stuff here? Because the earlier he gets his damage out, the higher likelihood you can he can turn the fight or at least live. So right away, I would have summoned my W, right? Summon a boar, summon the necros, and then roar someone. Like, imagine if you have two boars on this vent right now. She's dead. She's literally dead. But instead, you're just letting this guy beat you down like, summon yourself. Cast roar. Like, it took you forever to do that. This guy legitimately, could, this Night Sucker almost could be dead if you had the boars and the necro on him the entire time. Which, in my opinion, is so important. Like, this is really the reason why this player is getting held back. He's so good at laning, and he wins this game, right? Right, he wins this game. It's actually a pretty convincing win. But at the same time, like, if he was to lose, these would be the reasons, for sure. Alright, upcoming here is some pretty advanced Beastmaster stuff. But I really think what we're about to see here is a big difference between, like, a good Beastmaster. Like, this guy, he's a good Beastmaster. He knows what he's doing, but not at a super high level. And that's what we're going to see here. So, the fight breaks out. Right away, I just wish he puts the boars immediately on the Magnus. The goal of Beastmaster is to sort of slowly chip people down if you have these this build. You generally just want to put your units on the first person you see, and then when the fight develops, you sort of move the units to either kite uh, cores that have to rely on movement speed, or just put them on heroes that you roar or supports that you can kill. It really does change, but you took a while to hit someone. Then here, I really would like to see you instantly spawn your Necro and consider roaring the PL. The reason why I say that is I think you guys potentially could kill him because you know this is the real one because he's empowered, right? Unless this is like a next level Magnus who knows to not empower the real PL because it gives away which one's real. You should know that's real and then you actually could potentially kill him. 
right? It is an option here. You, you do quite a bit of damage. It's it's relatively insane. You end up roaring the Magnus, which is okay, right? You kill the Magnus. That's great. Uh, really good, you know, good micro up to this point. But then after that, I would look at your player perspective, but instantly your unit should shift onto this Venge. There's nothing threatening you right now. I don't know what you're running away from. I don't know what you're paying attention to. I think you're just panicking. And this is where intuition and Dota comes into play, right? Like how much can you pay attention? And uh, yeah, right here, he's just not paying attention to his units. His hero right now is his units, right? The units are what makes him powerful. So he needs to put the units on a bench. She would just die, right? He could purge her. He could put the boards on her. Instead, the necro is just smacking some creep. And then I don't know where it's going now. All the creeps run away and Venge lives. She could die. She could be dead. Could be dead. Uh, you do end up putting them on the Zeus here, which is okay, but still, there is some issue, right? You have a bit of an issue with controlling your units. Like, once again, let's look at the player perspective of the Beastmaster. Then, yeah, you're just too focused on your hero. Just focus on your units, right? Click your hero back to base, right? Select your hero, click the base, and control your units. That's all you can do. And one more time, only because players really, like, it's so funny how this boar issue, like his lack of spawning boars, doesn't only come into play in the landing stage. It's literally throughout the entire game is this issue. Not spawning boar, right? So this boar should already be spawned. He should throw axes and amp the damage, right? That's how the fight should start. Or he should throw axes at the venge to finish the kill, right? Something like that. But he doesn't do either of that, right? And it's just a weakness, you know? Like, that damage he got from the axes and the damage amp could theoretically change the entire course of the fight. Will it? I don't know. It's hard for me to know. But it could, right? And that's what you have to care about in Dota. The little things. Every little mistake you make. Every single time you don't cast wild axes when you can, when you have plenty of mana, or you don't cast boars, right? Like, that was fine. That was fine, but every little thing adds up. All right, so you guys get another Aegis here, and let's pay attention to how he ends off the game. So you're 20k ahead. I would say it's a pretty easy fight. The only thing I would consider here, as my Ursus is going top, maybe I would consider cutting the mid wave just to put some split pressure. Uh, I really like doing that because it's just going to open up the fight and give you a potential to get a pick off in a side lane. So I would consider being mid here, maybe even roar to Magnus, try to kill him. He has pretty bad items, so it's there, there's potential there. Nonetheless, you're going high ground. Okay, not spawning the Necros right away there was okay. Uh, but this is why I'd like to see you push in mid, right? You're going to get into these areas where, you know, they pop Glyph. There's a bit of downtime. You could just quickly kill the mid wave, right? You don't have to be here because you didn't have to kill it here. You could be here and have killed it, then immediately meet back up with your team or even be split pushing right now, which is definitely an option. They have pretty good high ground defense. They have Swap, they have Zeus. Um, they even have skewer, so like it's pretty hard for you guys to go high ground. Looks like you're gonna end up taking the fight anyway. That's the average 3k match. But I'm a huge fan whenever you're a split pushing type of hero. I'm not saying you have to split push. I'm just saying cut the waves and then go back to your team. It gives you the option to split push and it forces enemies to defend lanes that aren't the main one that you're pushing, which is always a good thing, right? As you can see, you guys are just getting stalled up, right? This is all, in my opinion, somewhat wasted time when you could just be splitting up the map. But nonetheless, you're gonna be going high ground here. Should throw your axes. This is where it's just backward, right? Like, gotta get these axes off cooldown. I can't stress this enough. I can't stress this enough. Just get them off cooldown. At this point in the game, your goal as Beastmaster is to spam your spells. If you have a long range spell and plenty of mana to use it, just use it, right? That's not a good roar. <laughs> My man was completely dead. Uh, probably at that point would want to save it for the PL. Game's over nonetheless. You guys are 20 gay ahead. These are the little things that I care about, and I want you guys to care about as well. You can't make these mistakes and be like, ah, it's all right. We won the game anyway. It's not okay, right? And that's how you get better at Dota. Even when you win, right? That's why I wanted, wanted to look at a win and not a loss for once. Even when you win, you have to be able to objectively look at your gameplay and try to figure out like, hey, maybe I'm slow here. Maybe I'm not spamming boars enough. Maybe I'm not using my hawks correctly. Maybe I'm not using wild axes correctly. Maybe I'm roaring people who are already dead, right? These are the questions that go through my head. And you need to ask yourself, do they go through my head as in your head <laughs> uh, as well? Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you've learned quite a bit about the offline. And uh, if you did and you like SC Asia, like and subscribe and comment that SC Asia is the best server in the world. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLeap.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, 
get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.